Oh, hello there, my fellow Americans. We are now seven games into the Premier League season, which means by now, your NFL team has most likely let you down, and you still have no hopes. Which means it's the perfect time for this foundation to tell you which team to bandwagon in the English Premier League 2025 edition. Before we get into that, go ahead and follow me on IG at the Fat Asian Official. I'm trying to get to 5K by the end of the year, you know, let the bitches know. All right, without further ado, let's get into this. And at number one, I mean, there's, there's a fairly obvious favorite here. They have statistically been the best team to bandwagon for the past decade. They are the only four consecutive time winners of the Premier League. They've won six out of the last seven years. They won the treble two years ago. They have the greatest manager the sport has ever seen. They have arguably the best player in the world right now in Erling Holland, who broke the single season record for goals scored in the Premier League in his rookie season and is currently on pace to do it again this year. Yeah, this baby Thor scored back-to-back -back hat tricks and came within a wood molecule of scoring three hat tricks in a row. Yeah, he almost scored a hat trick of hat tricks. He is putting up prime Messi and Ronaldo numbers in a more competitive league. My man is a walking absurdity, an absolute joke of a talent, a mutant, and he's only 24 years old. They are as sure of a bet to win the league as we've ever seen in Premier League history. The only little bit of a chink in their armor is two things. One, they lost Rodri for the season, who is a ball and door contender and a key figure to Pep Guardiola's system, but I still think they're going to pull it out this year. And secondly, here's the bigger mystery, and that is Pep Guardiola Guardiola's contract is done at the end of the season, and he is not committed to an extension. Typically, if a manager is going to stay, they never leave the extension to when the contract is up. They always do it a year before. So many are taking this as a sign that this will be Pep Guardiola's final year at Manchester City. Which means, as American, this might be your last chance to bandwagon on the surest bet in Premier League history. <laughs> and typically, I would say on the show that, yeah, you should only root for Manchester City if all your teams suck, if your life sucks because this is the equivalent of jumping onto the Golden State bandwagon after they got KD. But then I thought to myself, and I looked around, and I was like, you know what? I think that most people's lives suck in America. In fact, I think most people's lives suck in the world, period, right now. And if you're on the West Coast, and you gotta wake up at 6 a.m. to see your team play in the Premier League live, then goddamn it, I don't blame you if you want a guaranteed dub every single time you wake up that early. Or if you just need a singular dub in your shitty life right now, then yeah, go ahead, bandwagon on Manchester City, fuck it. Because these motherfuckers will deliver nine times out of 10 they're gonna win the league, even without Rodri. And here's the thing, even if Pep leaves at the end of the season, the team has just run so well from ownership down that they might keep on dominating the league even after he leaves. They were winning titles even before Pep Guardiola got here. They have generations of talent just stockpiled on this roster, and they are brought to you by Oil Money. Yeah, they're owned by the UAE. So yeah, they'll have the proverbial bag to entice the next great footballing mind onto their touchline. It is them and Real Madrid for the two best teams that are run from top to bottom in the world right now. And unless ownership changes, I don't see them not being contention to win the title for the next decade. So yeah, if you want to hop on Pep Guardiola's last dance tour at Manchester City this year, I don't blame you, bro. Fucking go nut. All right, but number two, and this is probably the more appetizing of the teams for my traditional American audience, because not everybody loves a guaranteed win. People like a little drama in their lives, let's be honest. That's why I'm recommending Arsenal. For my NFL comparison, they are the San Francisco 49ers of the EPL. They got a young coach that people say is state-of-the-art when it comes to tactics, a fantastic roster full of exciting players. They both look good in red and white, and they both play attractive, entertaining football. But like the 49ers, until they win the big one, people will keep calling them a choke artist. And that's kind of the point of hopping onto the bandwagon, at least in my opinion. You want to get there before they hit the top. And that's why Arsenal is my top suggestion to most American fans, especially if you're new to the Premier League, because they are most likely the next team to be crowned after Pep Guardiola vacates the throne. Their coach, Mikel Arteta, was a star pupil under Pep Guardiola and employs many of the same tactics, and many of his former players, actually. It's a little bit incestuous. This team of young, blossoming talents are exciting. In fact, they should have won the league two years ago before they, they kind of choked it away. Last year, they were in contention before kind of fading down the stretch, but they came in second place once again. They put up a good fight so far despite a couple of unlucky red cards and some unlucky injuries to key players. And yeah, things haven't broken quite right for them, but Mikel Arteta has proved himself to be one of the best, young, sharpest minds in the footballing game. And the squad is still very young and maturing at the same time. And the new signing, Calafiori, looks fantastic in the limited space that we've seen him in. And they do feature the best single defender in the world right now, William Saliba. And the cherry on top for many of my American fans. And I say this every single year, because it never changes. Arsenal's badge is a literal gun. And what red-blooded American doesn't love themselves a gun? And here's the number one reason why I would recommend Arsenal over Manchester City, over Liverpool. And that is simply, win or lose, you get entertainment. Because win, duh, you get entertainment. But you lose, you have something called AFTV, where you get the funniest fucking fan reactions on YouTube, like this. Uh, why would you do that? Fucking doing this one at me! fucking side every time! So yeah, for everyone new to the English Premier League, Arsenal would be my choice. Now third on my list of teams 
that if you had to wake up at 6 a.m. on the West Coast and watch a team win, I would recommend Liverpool. And here's the thing, they shouldn't be on this list. Let me explain. Their former coach, Jurgen Klopp, was Mr. Liverpool for the past decade. He took a team that was floundering in mediocrity for most of the 2000s and brought them to the promised land, winning them a Champions League title as well as their first ever Premier League title in their history. To say he was beloved by the fan base is an understatement. But then, almost out of nowhere last year, he proclaimed that he was running out of energy and he would be leaving the team at the end of the season. Now, whenever a legendary coach leaves your team, it is an impossible act to follow. I've just never seen it happen before. But somehow, Arnie Slot has come in, inherited a talented but underperforming squad, and has them currently on top of the fucking table. Yes, even above Manchester City. Now, it must be said that this is only six games in, and they haven't played the toughest schedule, which was also kind of a nice dig at the rivals Manchester United, who they crushed 3-0. But you can only play who's in front of you. And so far, so good for the dirty slot. Let me tell you, slot ball, so far, taking the league by storm. A hallmark of this Liverpool squad has always been their counterattack. They still are one of, if not the best counterattacking teams in the world. They are ruthless, on demon time, blazing speed. And if you lose the ball to them in a dangerous area, good night, it's over. You blink and you're picking the ball out of your net. But the new system that Arnie Slot has come and instilled on this team has brought a lot more control to the game. No longer are they just going balls to the wall, heavy metal pressing the entirety of the game. No, now they have a bit of possession, now they can kind of breathe, relax, take the air out of the other team, kind of like the way that Pep Guardiola and Arsenal do it. And what it lends is a more tactical fit, depending on their opponent and the situation in the game. And it's made even more impressive, considering they made very little headway in the transfer market. This is pretty much the same roster that looked all out of sorts just a couple of months ago under Jurgen Klopp. So that's why I say this shouldn't happen. This never happens. But here we are, an earning slot should be the story of the Premier League so far. But, 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 with all of that said, they have a murderer's row of games coming up. Let me check on the docket. They have Arsenal, Chelsea, Real Madrid, Bayer Leverkusen, and Manchester City on December 1st. So suffice it to say, two months from now, I could be looking pretty foolish. But as much as this pains me as a Manchester United fan, I think slot ball is for real. And for anyone who decides to bandwagon Liverpool this year, I don't blame you. They're going to be incredibly entertaining to watch. They are pretty much the wild card of the Premier League this year, and they're sitting on top of the table right now. And if I know my American viewers, y'all love a wild card. Wild card, bitches! Yeah! What? All right, and coming in at number four, this is where I get a little bit spicy. Might surprise a couple people here. I'm going to Aston Villa, and I would have never thought I would be saying this three years ago, because that is when Unai Emery, who at the time was labeled a Premier League failure after his horror showing at Arsenal, decided that he would take over an Aston Villa that was in a relegation fight for their lives. And it was fitting that he took over a team named the Villains. This would be the beginning of Unai's villain arc as he returned to the Prem with a vengeance. He safely got Aston Villa into the mid table and then finished his second season in fourth, good enough for the Champions League. All along the way, beating his former employer in Arsenal and humiliating Pep Guardiola's Manchester City, all with a fraction of the Trad Giants. Now, in the offseason, many thought that this team kind of overperformed last year and they regressed back to their usual mid table form, especially because they lost some big names, Douglas Louise. But apparently, Unai forgot to read the script because he has got them fly maybe even better than what they were a year ago. Their transition from Douglas Weiss to Onana has been seamless. And now they got this kid coming off the bench who might just be the greatest super sub on the planet right now. John Duran was a kid that they almost sold in the offseason, but decided to keep him around and he has saved their asses on multiple occasions in this early season. And he even came off the bench and scored a worldie to beat Bayern Munich in the Champions League. In less than two years, Unai Emery has taken a team from the relegation battles of the Premier League to beating Bayern Munich in the Champions League. Just let that sink in for a second. He might be doing the best coaching job in the sport right now. Now, will they win the league? Maybe ever? Probably not. Undoubtedly, their talents are going to get snatched up, and Unai is going to go to one of these bigger clubs. But will they be the most interesting team? Maybe the most entertaining team to root for this season? Remember, this is a one-season bandwagon show, and Unai Emery and the supervillains fit all the parameters. If I was a complete neutral, I think logically, I think you should still go Arsenal, probably Liverpool. But for my choice, if I was a true neutral, the villains. The villains would be the choice for me. How about this? If you're you're more of a hipster type, then I would go the villains. 
I think that's fair. And all right, let's mix it up a little. It's not gonna be rankings from here on out. The next two teams that I'm gonna be talking about are traps. And by that, I mean they got the brand name, you'll recognize them. Historically, they might have even been good, but do not be fooled. Do not be fooled. I warn you again, do not make the mistake of becoming a fan of one of these franchises. That will only lead you down a path of suffering and sadness and anger and perhaps erectile dysfunction. But that is neither here or there. Instead, you should go the intelligent route and place these two teams where they belong, in Hate Watch Corner. Yes, as these are the teams that you will receive the most joy by laughing at their downfall. And first up is the classic joke of the Premier League, the Sisyphus of England, Tottenham Hotspur. For my NFL comparison, they are the Buffalo Bills of the EPL. Doomed to be good, but never quite good enough for silverware. And this is why I talk about the trap, okay? This time, just a year ago, they were sitting on top of the Premier League. They had a brand new spanking coach the team looked completely revitalized. But in true Spurs fashion, it was all but a mirage. And now a year later, take a look at their start to the season, and oof, I mean, you could just take a look at the pictures of their manager from the touchline, and it says it all. Big Ainge looks like his wife just left him and has taken the kids, and the dog, and is leaving him the shitty cat that meows all the time and throws up on the carpet randomly. Am I going through a breakup right now? Who knows? Just don't do it. Don't tie yourself to a cursed franchise. It's not worth it. You're American. Your life is shitty enough already. Don't do this to yourself. I would say to every everyone but one niche demographic. And that is, if you're Asian, or you enjoy K-pop, or you like anime, then oddly, this is the team for you. Because if you're the greatest Asian player of all time, and K-pop cutie, Hungman's son, I mean, look at him, look at this pudding. And this past summer, they just brought in Dominic Selene, who is one of the best young and up-and-coming strikers in the Premier League. But more importantly, every time he scores, he hits a different anime pose. And I mean, for the longest time, this was his profile picture, the fucking Obito mask from Naruto. So by some random occurrence of God, Tottenham Hotspur has become the de facto club in the Premier League for weeaboos and koreaboos. So yeah, if you're like way too into blue lock, this is probably the team for you. And then there was the tragedy of Manchester United. If you want to watch the Dallas Cowboys of the Premier League, lo and behold. But I would argue they're somehow worse because the Dallas Cowboys on occasion play entertaining football. And like the Cowboys, they used to be fantastic in the 90s until their legendary coach left the team and they have steadily gone downhill ever since. Unfortunately, this is a team I root for and I wouldn't wish this fate upon my worst enemy. The ownership is shit. The club seems rotten to the core. Each player we buy turns to ass or gets injured. We spent $100 million on a Brazilian named Anthony and getting a Brazilian wax would be less painful than watching this man play. That is how completely useless this man is. They are the third biggest club in the world and they show up every Saturday like they've never seen a leather ball in their fucking lives. It is truly impressive that a team could spend this much money and be this shit. And there is very little hope of things getting better at the club anytime soon or even in the foreseeable future. So my best advice to you is to stay afar because this traveling circus is best viewed from an arm's length and simply wait for the clowns to take the stage and laugh. Laugh so you don't cry. You know how Stephen A. Smith just shits on the Cowboys every single year and the Cowboys never let him down? That's how you should treat Manchester United. Be a Stephen A. Smith to them and they'll never cease to make you smile. Now this next team, I'm gonna warn you right here, might be fool's gold. And that team is Chelsea Football Club. Now, Chelsea have been in really bad sorts for the last few seasons after the former owner had to go ahead and sell the club because his ties to good old Tootin' Putin. And ever since then, it has been a complete shit show at the club. Like Manchester United, they were a former giant of the Premier League, but it's since fallen on dark times. But in those dark times, there was one gleaming light. And it turns out when you buy every single high potential youngster, pretty much in world football, that Real Madrid hasn't bought in first, you just might hit the jackpot on one of them. And what this London club did was steal Cole Palmer away from Manchester City. And let's be honest, he wasn't going to get a lot of playtime over at Manchester City, but given the chance at Chelsea, he has blossomed into arguably the second best player in the world right now. I mean, it's either him or Luminium Mall. But of course, I'm talking about the mouth breather that is Cole Palmer. He is the himbo athlete that we need in these trying times. And just look at him. No politics, no agenda, no brain cells. He is the human personification of fuck it, we ball. And the man just oozes class and can bang in worldies like this for fun. And after dropping a master class on the pitch, he'll go on to do classic interviews like this. How difficult is what? To watch it. You just oh. What? How can you not love this kid? If Jose Mourinho is the special one, then Cole Palmer is the special needs one. And unlike last season, it seems like they found a competent coach. Maresca Ball is flowing, and the one thing that seemed to be crippling the club, their ownership, is now in a hot civil war with each other, with one trying to annex the other out of the crew. And somehow, this has motivated the squad to get all the way up to fourth place, which is a drastic improvement considering where they were last year. And the hope is for Chelsea fan, 
is if they can rid themselves of the cancerous half of their ownership, then the rest of the league should watch out. Because despite Chelsea floundering for the last two seasons, they have accumulated so much talent that if they could just get their shit together, they would once again become one of the giants of the Premier League. And they already have their star player, the talisman, Cole Palmer, who's in Burberry ads for some reason. If this idiot savant, who may, just may, possess messy levels of autism, if they could hold on to this star boy and get their own shit together, they will rise to prominence far quicker than a Manchester United. Now here's the thing though, we don't know which half of the ownership was the cancerous half and which one was like the good half. And if they cut off the good half, then they're fucked, which is why they potentially could be fool's gold. But either way, if you're just following a team for just this season, I've watched Cole Palmer enough that I can guarantee that every early Saturday that you wake up, if you watch Chelsea, if you watch Cole Palmer, he alone will make it worth watching. So yeah, I guess it isn't really an endorsement of Chelsea as it is so much of Cole Palmer, but here we are. Last team that I am going to recommend, and this is truly an honorable mention, and it's it's gonna be kinda out there, so, so bear with me. If you are the type of person that likes to watch those animal videos where an animal barely escapes death, like have you ever seen that video of that lizard escaping the snake pit narrated by Snoop Dogg? Oh, there we go. Little cute little lizard. The lizard don't even see what's happening, but you understand me? One thing about a lizard, I think he a Geico. If he a Geico, he got a 15% chance of making it up out of here. Oh, he peep game right now. He's seen it. He's seen it. You watch. Oh, get out of there, man. Go. Did you see the feet on him? Oh, that's f***ed up. He has just entered into Snakeville, USA. This snake's coming from all angles. As he dips and dashes, he makes a getaway, jumps into the arms of a big snake. The twist is on, but they twisting themselves. Find it, find the loophole. Hey, go. Now you gotta find your way to the top of the mountain now, nephew. Get a hold of it. See, snakes can't do all that because they ain't got hands and they ain't got feet. Well, if this is your jam, then I suggest that you follow Everton this season. What? What? Stop, stop laughing. Yes. They've been in a relegation battle this entire season. And yes, they lost back-to-back 2-0 -back leads in absolutely soul-crushing fashion. This isn't a team that's gonna win a lot of games or draw a lot of games. That's not what it's about. It's about the lizard escaping the fucking snake pit. And as God is my witness, Sean Dyche is that lizard. While things look absolutely dire and will probably continue to look dire throughout the season, I would bet both of my testicles that Sean Dyche will guide those blue little lizards to the safety of the mid-table by the end of the year. And it will be riveting to watch. Or at least the highlights will be riveting to watch. I wouldn't actually recommend watching the whole games. And that is gonna be it for your bandwagoning guide of 2025 in the English Premier League. Hopefully I give a little, you know, something for everyone, for the haters, for the lovers, for the people who are into weird animal videos. Now go out there, pick a team, and get ready to be disappointed, fall in love, and get your heart broken. It's a beautiful sport. And for those who are new to this, welcome. Give the Hogo Bonita a chance. And you know, what's life with a little bit more sport in it? Probably a little bit better. Thank you my patrons, keep me alive and well during these trying times. Personal thank you to the GoTier. We got Robert Matai, Elm, Peter Barr, and Eric J. Thank you to Alex and Lewis for helping me edit this video if you guys want to employ them. Their contacts will be in the description down below. And yeah, I'll be here every week for the rest of the season with more fat Asian content. So until next week, boys, later. <laughs>